So I found this image of a standard uh, tensile test specimen. And uh, I don't care so much about the dimensions, but I want to make something in SOLIDWORKS. We'll make it out of some kind of steel, and uh, we'll run a stress analysis on it. And what we'll do is um, fix, for example, the left end in space. And to the right end, we'll apply a load of something like a 1,000 pounds. And we'll see what happens, where, uh, how the stress throughout the specimen compares after we apply the load. So to do that, let's insert a sketch on the top plane. And I'll start a line at the origin. Right now, I just don't care about the, uh, the dimensions. So I'll come down like this. And I'll draw some another horizontal line. And I want to connect these with an arc. And let's do a tangent arc. We want the arc coming off tangent to this horizontal surface. Now connect it up to this point right here. And I'm going to set a relationship. I'm going to click and hold shift, click both of these parts. And I'll make another relationship. Let's make this angle of uh, the, uh, the arc tangent to that line. So I'll add that relationship. And you'll see that straightens it out. It flows straight into the line like that. You'll see in the lower right, it says my sketch is underdefined. And that's kind of a good thing right now. We can, we can uh, play around with, with things. And when we want to test the effects of the radius on this arc, we can, we're free to redimension things as we see fit. In sketching it this way, what I'm taking advantage of are the symmetry between the top and bottom and the left and right side of the object. And I'm going to do a couple of mirrors to make the full object. So I'll insert a center line, and here's the center line. We'll just draw it straight across our specimen like this. And I'll draw another center line uh, across the other center of our piece. And then what I'm going to do, I'll mirror these entities. And we select. We need to select the entities to mirror. And I'll make a counterclockwise selection. And you note when I made that lasso selection counterclockwise, it also selected these two center lines, which I don't want to mirror. So I'll exit out. But let's do it again. I'll say Mirror Entities. And now I'm going to select Clockwise. And this will only select things that are within the loop itself. And it'll ignore the two center lines. So I've se selected all of the, the lines that I'm interested in. And let's mirror it. Let's do the first mirror about this horizontal line. That looks good. And so I'll click OK. And now let's do the same thing again if I went Clockwise. I selected, actually selected the center line. Let's try it again. I'll go clockwise again, avoiding that center line, bringing it around, selecting all of the uh, lines, entities that I want. And let's go mirror entities. And we'll mirror it about this line. And I clicked it. And look at the green check mark on the right. I haven't moved my mouse. I'm going to click the green button. And that's just like saying OK in one, uh, in one quick step. So I'll hit the letter F to center it up to do a full zoom on this drawing, on this sketch. So if I want to, I can make the center lines extend out. And note that now that I've got in my, my drawing, I can play around by grabbing one of these handles. And there's a mirror image on it. And that's a good thing, because I can change the dimensions later on. So for example, I can move the location of the, mark, the uh, arcs. I can move the lengths of it. And it's all mirror image. Everything is perfectly symmetric, which is good. And I can even change the radius of the arcs. And that's especially good for this one, because we want to check how, when we apply a load on the right side of 1,000 pounds, how does the stress compare when these arcs are very small, when the radius of these arcs are really small, compared to when they're big? Compared to if we uh, made this thing, if we wanted it to withstand a great deal of stress, I think what we'll find is that the stress won't be as big when we have large arcs. And there'll be stress risers or stress concentrations when they're small. But we'll see what happens. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to move out of inches and move into millimeters. And let's do a couple of uh, quick dimensions on this sketch, just to nail, nail some of these things down. Let's make this a 30 millimeter length. Let's make this height 30 millimeters. Let's make this also 30 millimeters. And let's, radii, let's ra radius the arc. We'll call it 5 millimeters. Notice that there's still sections of blue in this drawing. And what that section of blue means is that part of the sketch is underdefined. I can still stretch, uh, make this center part wider or thinner if I wanted to. So let's nail that down with a dimension. Let's make it, uh, let's do 10 millimeters in width. 
And now it says my, in the lower right, sketch is fully dis defined. Everything is, is black. Again, hit F to center everything up. Now I'm going to exit the sketch just by double clicking somewhere. And I'll hit Control 7 so we can go to a different view to see this. And now let's do, we'll extrude it, and we're going to make it 5 millimeters thick. So we'll go here. If I wanted to, I could play around with the height of it, but we really only want, we uh, want a 5 millimeter height for this object. So to see what it looks like, we can scroll around, and this is the part that we're going to uh, pull apart. We'll fix this point on the left, and we'll pull with a thousand pounds on the right, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video.